Well, we've come up to uh, a creek near the monastery to see if the salmon run has gotten this far up yet. We wanted to film part of the salmon run to kind of share it with our viewers. And I see the, the water is quite beautiful. And we've seen a few kayakers have come down through the white water up, upstream. But no salmon yet. They haven't gotten this far. So we're going to check out a few other streams and we'll see if, uh, if we find a salmon run, if we catch one. Uh, we'd like to let you see what... Um, what it looks like in this this part of the west coast. Uh, the biggest salmon run, of course, the Adams River salmon run, which is world famous, and millions of salmon go in. But uh, sometimes this river here, when uh, the salmon are in full run, it almost looks like you could just walk across the water on the backs of the salmon. But um, they haven't gotten this far. They say, we'll keep tabs and we'll see if we can't catch good view of salmon run for all of you. And same time, I'm going to talk about a couple of subjects while we're here. I'll uh, give the camera over to my uh, trusty cameraman here in a minute, and uh, Brother Ephraim, and let him hold the camera for us. Yeah, we, we may get one or two coming up uh, in the van, but I see they're fishing down on the sluice, so they must be that far up at least. They just haven't gotten this far. But uh, Ephraim, why don't you take, take the camera and hold it for me. I'm going to answer a couple of questions while we're here. I think uh, I had a number of questions. And, of course, it's the usual things about the uh, spooky tales about the memorial services and things like that. So a couple of people asked me, is there any kind of an actually something we could consider an official orthodox statement about the meeting of the uh, 3rd, 9th, and 40th day memorial services? Because... Uh, People have sent me now five or six versions about what they mean, some of them based on that um, completely false uh, writings attributed to Macarius of Egypt about the 3rd, 9th, and 40th day services. For those of you who are interested, uh, Macarius of Egypt wrote absolutely nothing. I believe a, a book recently published by, I think it was the Apostolic Diakoniki of the State Church in Greece by one of their foremost uh, patrologists. Uh, mentions that, the fact that all the research has demonstrated that Macarius of Egypt wrote absolutely nothing. None of the writings attributed to him are authentic. And uh, even the spiritual homilies, which were, of course, highly edited to take out non-Orthodox content uh, centuries ago, were not written by him, and that's well known. Uh, but certainly this um, rather silly teaching about the meaning of the 3rd, 9th, and 40th day services was not written by him. You'll find what would constitute an, an actual orthodox statement about it, something that's actually canonical and something that was uh, actually written by one of the Holy Fathers. First and foremost, of course, the constitutions of the Holy Twelve Apostles, which have great authority for the Orthodox Church. If you look at Book 8, Chapter 42, you'll find that um, uh, uh, what would be really an official orthodox statement about it. And uh, the other one, of course, would be St. Simeon of Thessaloniki, who um, the, recognized as the foremost of all the lit liturgists in the Orthodox Church, in his uh, book on things done for the departed, on things done for the dead. And I, I wonder if I don't have an actual reference. Um, yeah, you look for on things done for the departed, where he tells us that... Um, uh, among other things, the coli was offered because man is also a seed, and like a fruit of the earth, and like a seed he's sown in the earth and will be raised again by God's might. The third day is celebrated because of the Holy Trinity and the raising of Christ from the dead on the third day, and so forth. Nothing about uh, spooky stories or um, wandering souls or toll gates or any of those things in the official statements of the church, only in some kind of Gnostic... Um, forgeries that were attributed to a few saints, and some stories that originated in the rather dark spiritual days of the 19th, 19th century, the 1800s in Russia, which was really an era of spiritual catastrophe. And uh, But the, if you want really an official statement of the Church, go to the Constitutions of the Holy Twelve Apostles, go to uh, Book 8, Chapter 42, read the entire St. Simeon of Thessaloniki on things done for the departed, and also Go to um, St. Uh, Dionysi the Areopagite and his things uh, done for the departed, um, where he describes the meaning 
and the theology of the funeral services. And you put aside all this rubbish and nonsense that's been circulating around for the last few centuries and see what the church actually officially believes and teaches about these things. Um, I, I think that would be much more edifying than, uh, than all of these goofy stories about toll houses and wandering souls and going to heaven and after you've looked at the face of God face to face, then you're taken off to hell to see the torments of the damned and all kinds of monstrous stuff. You might also, of course, want to read um, the uh, Ten Refutations of Purgatory by St. Mark of Ephesus, in which he uh, also um, repudiates a lot of these stories like the Toll House Tale and all that. So uh, you, uh, you have now this, these references to official things in the church which are clearly authentic. And uh, so you should put aside all of this, this um, pseudo-epigraphic and ghost stories and spook tales and look at what, what the church actually teaches about it.